In the, in the first election since the deadly police shooting of unarmed teenager Michael Brown in 2014, voters in Ferguson, Missouri re-elected their mayor. Last night, Mayor James Knowles III secured a third term with a win over City Council member Ella Jones. Here are the results. Knowles earned 56% of the vote. Jones had 44% of the vote. The mayor will have to address a mountain of issues in the community, including the distrust of the police department. Last month, many accused the police of hiding evidence after the release of a new video showing Michael Brown in a store just moments before he encountered the officer who shot and killed him. Plus, the department is struggling to recruit more officers, which is down about 25%. And the department is having trouble carrying out court-ordered reforms, such as more cops on the street after the Department of Justice found it discriminated against poor, poor black residents. Now, joining me on FaceTime in Ferguson, Missouri, is Wesley Bell, a Ferguson City, Council, city Councilman. Mr. Bell. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. So what do you feel about the um, election results? You know, um, it, the, the, the uh, residents spoke. Um, um, you know, this is the democratic process, and you have to respect it. And, you know, and, and, and just as a side point, small town elections are, are there's a different dynamic. They're, they're, they're more personal, so it, it, it's different. So it's different, but I want to ask you, you know, I'm sort of intrigued. I'm going to bring my panel in here with me. I've got Greg Carr, Spencer Overton, and Raynard, uh, Raynard Jackson. I'm going to bring the panel in with me. You know, it's interesting because it sort of begs the question after everything that happened in Ferguson um, that we have a white mayor uh, in the city. We've got, you know, uh, I believe um, Ferguson, two-thirds of the population is African-American, um, and voter turnout was low in the African-American community in 2016, and I suspect uh, in this um, election as well what do we what do we say about voter turnout well, in from, Ferguson I, I'm from you know, there I, oh. I think it's a recurring theme you see a, a lot of voter apathy um, you know when I look at St. Louis City uh, with which had a very contentious election uh, recently and we saw only 26 percent of the population turn out and we see that consistently in in poor and particularly African-American communities. Councilman Bell, what were the numbers in uh, Ferguson in terms of turnout? What were the the turnout numbers? Do you have an idea yet? Yeah, we had about 4,000 uh, 4,000 people come out and vote now and that's in a city of 21,000. So when you look at voting trends, so that's it, about you know, 20%. Turnout, however, it's still, uh, it, you know, we still have to do better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, we get what we deserve. Black folks always complain about the man, the system. Here, we had a chance in Ferguson to vote. If black folks just voted, they could have put in anybody they wanted from mayor, police chief, prosecutor, all the way down. Baltimore the same way. We don't vote, so we should stop complaining about racism and white folk until we do all that's within our power. I don't want to hear the complaints anymore. You know, that's, that's, really, that's really not co-equal. Uh, I agree with you. We need to participate. But to say then that then follows that we should stop complaining really defies logic. No, uh, Council, well, they, they, you need to speak about this. You know, Ferguson has a lot of transient community, a lot of people who are in and out who may not be eligible to vote. Uh, this We do need voter education, but more importantly, we need to address some of those underlying issues. I mean, voting is low on your priority list when you're trying to find a job, brother, trying to figure out how you're going to make it through today. And so I think we have to do a better job of dealing with the politics on the ground and helping people improve their lives. Voting when comes last. We get the list. sick and tired of being sick and tired. Well, you know, Fannie Lou Hamer, who did not have the choice that you say, who I hope, if you had been back then, wouldn't have accused her of, of being kind she of. She did a, something about well, it. Well, let, let me let me ask my guest. Um, did what uh, what was the role? What role did race play in the election? Was there any mm. discussion about whether or not a white mayor uh, could adequately address the concerns of the African American community in Ferguson, or was that just not an issue at all? Well, you know, I want to put a, give a little perspective uh, on this. Uh, Ferguson does not have a strong form of mayoral government, so the mayor does not run the city council or run the city. The, the mayor is one vote, just like the rest of the city council. Um, so, so it's are, not, you, sir, are you saying then the mayor just doesn't matter? I'm not saying the mayor doesn't matter, but he matters as much as I do. I'm, he's one vote just like myself. And so the progress and the reforms that we start implementing the, in the city are not contingent on who is the mayor. It depends. We, we, we need the majority of, uh, of the vote. Um, and for the most part, the council has been on, on the same page with, with pushing some of these reforms. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm going to ask you, um, uh, before we, we run out of time, um, going forward, I mean, Ferguson became the symbol, right. you know, in 2014 after, after the deaths that we saw of all of the issues that so many African Americans are feeling across the country. On the heels of this election, what would you say to people like myself, frankly, uh, um, back uh, who just a few years ago said that it felt that we were seeing uh, the state sanctioned um, murder of black boys and men across the country and then African American uh, African Americans in Ferguson didn't show up to vote. What does that say to the nation, particularly where we've got Jeff Sessions reviewing consent decrees and the conduct of police officers all over the country? You know, and, and again, to put this in perspective, in the state of Missouri, African American males make up about 8% of the population, but make up over close to 48% of, the, of Missouri's prison population. So that speaks to much larger issues that need to be addressed. So I could not agree more. Um, and, and, but when it comes to the, these elections, I think one of your uh, panelists said it, um, accurately, we have to get out and vote. Those who don't vote get ignored. And politicians know who votes and who doesn't vote. The, the data is out there. Um, and, and, and if your community is consistently not showing up at the polls, you're going to get what you, what you, instead of get what you pay for, you're going to get what you vote for or don't Spen vote. Yeah, yeah, Spencer. Yeah. In national elections, black folks and white folks vote about the same. There's party money behind that, et cetera. In these local elections, at least in 2012, whites were three times more likely to vote than African Americans. Uh, you know, we have to get off of this party horse race on the national level piece yeah. and focus on these local elections in terms of turnout. We talk about police chiefs, economic development, schools, all of these things are critical to our community and Absolutely. turnout is important. Yeah, and nothing, nothing affects your community more than local than local elections. Now, the national elections are the sexy ones. So those are the ones that we get excited about. But again, if you want your not only your streets fixed, but the way you're policed, the way your courts run, those are local elections. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, I, I find the whole thing just heartbreaking. We've got Republican governors all over the country. We have a Rep Republican uh, in the White House. We've got a move for states' rights. We have to show up and we have to vote. Thank you, Councilman Bell. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man was shot to killed by Baton Rouge police. Your hands are in the air and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. And we will keep focused on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at seven on TV One.